What is up guys? My name is Lex. We are still here in Las Vegas for the World Series of Poker. I've been here for 17 days. I've made six poker vlogs and this session is my last session before heading back home to Florida. We're starting off tonight at the Bellagio, one of my favorite poker rooms in the country. We're playing 5, 10, 20 and the first hand we get dealt in is Pocket Jacks. Early position limps for $20. I raised to $80 in the big blind. The straddle folds and under the gun plus one limper makes the call. Flop comes out good. King, Jack, eight, giving us middle set. I throw out a bet and he folds. A very swingy trip so far. When I got off the plane two weeks ago, I immediately lost $1,000 pocket kings to pocket aces. I then made a questionable fold when I folded an eight high flush at the 10 20 40 game for over a $10,000 pot. I got aces cracked versus king, Jack. In a $5,000 pot and just last video, I got set under set, so we're definitely on the wrong side of variance, but hopefully today we can get out of that and start running better. After flopping a set my very first hand with pocket jacks, I win some medium sized pots here with some mediocre hands and up about $500 until the cutoff limps for $20, the button raises to 90 and I have pocket kings in the small blind, a slam dunk three bet spot here. I have about $2,000 in my stack and the button covers me. He seems like a good European player. I make it $380. Back over to him and he goes into the tank for a while. I'm hoping this will look like somewhat of a squeeze play. Button versus small blind. Maybe he'll put in a light four bet or possibly call with a weaker hand. But unfortunately, he lets his hand go, which seems like the case here in the Bellagio. A lot of these regs play very tight and good pre-flop, so it's pretty hard to get money out of them. I've noticed that at the Bellagio, people play very disciplined pre-flop, unlike other states where people might get out of line calling three bets or putting in cold four bets. That really doesn't happen here at the Bellagio playing 510, which makes it harder to get value with your big pocket pairs, but can't complain. We're up about $600 now in the session. When making a poker video, I usually pick out six to 10, maybe 12 notable hands that I play over a four to eight hour period and try to make it as exciting as possible, but that's not always realistic. I don't just sit down and pick up pocket kings and jacks right off the bat. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys one full orbit of hands that I get dealt in just to make this session a little bit more realistic. After about an hour of folding after our pocket king's hand, we finally pick up a pretty queen of clubs. Jack of clubs, a suited broadway, one of my favorite type of hands. I raise to $40 and then the button makes it $150. The big blind cold calls this $150 raise. And like I said before, a lot of the time here at the Bellagio playing 510, when people three bet you, they most likely always have monsters. However, with queen jack suited, Around $1,500 effective. I think I can peel here and look for a good flop. And a good flop is not what we get. It comes out ace, ace, seven, and we end up check folding, and the button later shows he had pocket kings. The player to my left ends up leaving the game, and I slide over one seat to get the best viewpoint for the vlog, and then two new players sit down. They both buy in for one yellow chip, $1,000, and five black chips. And if you see this at your table, you can assume that these players are professional players. A lot of the time if you play poker for a living, you keep a bunch of chips in your bag so that you don't have to go to the cage each time. A lot of the time you color up your chips as well. So if you see players buying in for denominations like this, you can assume that they at least know what they're doing. The player who just sat down on my right opens up under the gun to $25, which is a very odd sizing. Bellagio uses $10 chips, so the sizings are usually 30, 40, and 50. So to open up 2.5x, we can assume that he mostly plays online poker as well. With pocket jacks next to act, I think this could be a flat call sometimes and sometimes a three bet. This time I decide to three bet to $80, and now the player to my left four bets me to $230. 
A little info on this player, it's the same guy who Limp called my first hand when I flopped a set of jacks and then who also 3-bet me on the button and later showed pocket kings, so we can assume that he is limping his weaker hands and then raising and 3-betting his stronger hands. Under the gun raise and I 3-bet next to act and he 4-bets me? This has to be a super strong hand. I'm putting him on aces and kings and maybe sometimes queens. What makes poker so hard is that you don't know what your opponent has when you go to the flop and the turn in the river, but what makes this spot pretty easy is that I know what he has. I know he has queens, kings, or aces. He's not going to be doing this play with anything other than that hand, so if I put him on a bigger pocket pair than mine, we should just be folding. However, he has around $2,000 in his stack, and I have over $2,000. If I know he has a big over pair, I can play super straightforward. If I flop a set, I could win a huge $4,000 pot, if I don't flop a set, I'm just going to be check folding. So I make the call here for $230. A four bet pot incoming. We're going to the flop. Heads up. It comes out ace, deuce, deuce. I check over to him, expecting him to put out a small bet and for us to fold, but he checks back. Definitely could be trapping here. The turn is a king, an even worse card. If he has pocket kings or aces, he made a full house. I check again. He checks for a second time and the river is a jack, giving us a full house. An interesting card here. We could be getting massively cooler if he was slow playing aces or kings. Ultimately, I decide to check over to him and he checks back. I show pocket jacks and he tells me he had pocket queens. So we got super lucky there on the river hitting a two outer to take down over a $500 pot. You may be wondering why I did not lead out there when I made a full house on the river. And if we go back to the pre-flop play, I put them on queens, kings, and aces. Pocket aces and pocket kings are a bigger full house than ours. And if he has pocket queens, he's not really gonna be calling any bet. So if we bet, we want him to be calling with worse hands. And it's pretty hard to get called by worse on this board in a four bet pot by a very tight player. So I think check calling is actually the best play. Up close to $2,000 on the session when the cutoff makes it 30, the button calls and we have pocket aces in the big blind running good this session so far. I make it $110 and both of my opponents end up making the call. So we go three ways to the flop with pocket aces. We see a board of five, six, eight, two spades. And to be honest, it's not really my favorite board. When I three bet out of the big blind, I'm gonna have big over pairs big suited broadways and ace high hands and my opponents can have a lot of hands that smash this board they can have all the two pairs sets and straights and i really can't so i decide to check here at a position basically trying to see where my opponents are at the cutoff checks and now the button throws out a bet of a hundred dollars she has about nine hundred dollars left in her stack and i don't think she's going to be getting out of line here very often we could be beat here by some two pairs and sets we can also be ahead of her hands like pocket nines or tens for over pairs. She could have an eight, maybe a pair plus flush draw or pair plus straight draw. I make the call cutoff mixed to fold. Heads up to the jack of clubs on the turn. I decide to go with a very unorthodox play here and lead out for a blocker sizing bet. I bet out $160 for two reasons. One, to try to take the lead back in the hand and also to get value from hands that may call a turn bet but won't bet the turn themselves. Let's say she has an 8x hand, maybe a hand like pocket sevens, maybe pocket nines or a flush draw. All those hands will call a small bet but are not gonna bet the turn themselves. By leading out here, I can get called by those worse hands and also I can easily see where I'm at. This woman has played very straightforward the last hour or so, so if she raised me here, I could easily fold my hand, but she folds rather quickly, so I'm not really sure what she could have had, but the chips get pushed in our direction. This table is not what it used to be. The action players have left and we're no longer doing a mandatory straddle under the gun, so I decide to book a win of about $2,000 and head on down to Resorts World where they're playing 5, 10, 20. It looks like a decent game. I buy in for $5,000 and I immediately get into some big pots. There is a ton of money on this table. The action opens up here on the button who has a $13,000 stack. He makes it $60 to go. I make it $220 in the small blind with ace queen offsuit. The action folds back over to the button who makes the call heads up in a three bet pot. The board comes out king nine four rainbow. I continue for 160 and he calls turn card four of clubs and I decide to slow down and check and he checks behind. 
The river card's a 10, and now I have to decide whether I want to check here and give up or lead out with a bet. When my opponent calls preflop and then calls my flop bet but doesn't bet the turn, I don't think he's going to have a strong hand like a top pair holding, a two pair, or a set. So on this 10 river card, he could improve to a hand like jack 10 or queen 10 for our third pair. I also think it's very likely he has a smaller pocket pair to the board and I think if I bet big here, I can get him off those hands. I have a queen in my hand so I block him from having queen jack. I can also have a set of 10s, pocket kings, ace king, aces, all those hands I might play this way. So I decide to lead out here with a bluff. I make it $700. He doesn't immediately snap fold, but he doesn't snap call, which is good. He's in the tank now and I actually feel very comfortable in this spot. I feel like he's going to fold here a ton of the time. After about 45 seconds of thinking, he then tells me he hit the river and he has a 10. So now I'm a little bit worried he's going to make a hero call here. But eventually, he folds. And we take this one down with ace high, our very first hand over here at Resorts World. I want you guys to look at the top left of the screen. There's a player in seat number three who has over $20,000 in a stack. He seems to know what he's doing, but he seems to be giving a ton of action as well, raising a lot, three betting a lot, and also when I first sat down at the table, he pulled a massive bluff on the river, betting $4,000 with stone cold nothing. This guy is here to play some big pots and give out some action, and we're about to play a huge one with him coming up. I hope you guys are ready for a big one. Under the gun limps for $20 and we have ace of diamonds, ace of hearts in the hijack. I raised to $80 and now the button, the action player with over $20,000 in his stack re-raises us to $260. Action folds back over to me and this is a slam dunk four bet all the time. I have a little over $5,000 in my stack so I make it $800. The action back over on the button player who seems to be wanting to play some big pot, so I don't expect him to ever be folding here, and he doesn't. He makes the call, so with pocket aces, we're going to the flop. Heads up, it comes out eight, three deuce, two hearts, a great board for us. I mentioned earlier at the Bellagio playing 510 that when people three bet you, they usually always have queens, kings, and aces, but this game is completely different. We're playing an uncapped 510 20 game against a player on the button who's super aggressive with over $20,000 in a stack. I do think he's going to be three betting a wider range on the button and probably defending pretty wide as well because we have over $5,000 in our stack. He can have some offsuit and suited broadways, some offsuit ace high hands as well maybe some smaller pocket pairs, and some suited connectors. So the reason why I say this board is so good is because he's never going to have two pair on this board. He's never going to have 8-3, three, 3 deuce, or 8 deuce in a 4 bet pot. So I lead out for a $410 bet, about a 1 fourth pot size bet here. Basically just trying to keep him in there with all of his trash hands that completely missed on this board that will want to float me and potentially try to bluff me on the turn. After thinking for about 20 seconds, he makes the call for 410, and we're going here to the turn, which is the 7 of hearts, now giving us the nut flush draw along with our overpair. With 3 hearts on the board, we could be losing here to a flush, but given the fact that we do have the ace of hearts in our hand, I don't really feel too scared of that. I think against a very aggressive player who has the propensity to bluff in big pots, the best line here is to check, which is what I do. By checking here, my hand's going to look a lot like ace-king or ace-queen. This will allow him to bluff with some hands that he floated me with on the flop versus that small sizing and also value bet hands like pocket tens or pocket jacks. After thinking for about 20 seconds, he throws out a $2,000 bet into about a $2,400 pot. I look back at my stack and I have about $4,100 left and I have to figure out what I want to do. Against a very nitty player, I may be able to find a fold here versus the $2,000 bet, but with pocket aces and a four bet pot with the ace of hearts against an action player who definitely has the capability of putting in some big bluffs, there's no way I'm folding. So my options are call 2000 or go all in for the rest of my $4,500. Let's say he has an over pair to the board like pocket tens, jacks, or queens, and he bets $2,000 and I go all in for my $4,500. He's never going to be folding given that price and over an $11,000 pot. I don't want to call and allow a scare card to come out in the river and the action to go check check. So after thinking for about 30 seconds with pocket aces and a four bet pot, I decide to go all in. 
I ship in 4,500. He snap calls. We're going here to the river. We decide to run out the board two times. And the first river is a five. The second river is another five. I look over at my opponent and he shows eight, six of hearts for a flush, which is going to crack our aces over an $11,000 pot being shipped in the opposite direction. Probably the worst feeling in poker is watching all of your chips being shipped in the opposite direction. This entire trip out here in Vegas has been pretty rough, losing some big spots and big pots. I was running good so far today, up over $2,000 at the Bellagio, and in just 23 minutes, I get pocket aces cracked by 8-6 suited. So we call it a quits after that hand. Um, there's probably a million different endings that I was hoping for for the World Series of Poker 2022. And I have to say, losing an $11,000 pot with pocket aces in a four bet pot versus the only action player at the table is not one of the endings that I wanted for the World Series of Poker. But I can't really get mad because this is just the negative variance of the game. You know, I'm gonna win with pocket aces 70 to 80% of the time, and I'm gonna lose 25 to 20% of the time. And today, was one of those times I lost. So I can't get mad. I mean, the hand plays itself. It's cooler, it's a bad beat, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm not really mad. I'm definitely tilted. Um, I'm tilted with a lot of things. I'm tilted with how the games were for this series. They were very tough. Uh, not many good games I could find. And then I'm tilted with the way I ran too. Like I ran pretty bad this entire trip. Got aces to kings. I didn't really make any big hands. Didn't really cooler anybody. Last video, I got senator set, which is a massive cooler. And then today, losing with aces for a huge pot. Um, I think this month in June was one of my worst months, or maybe is my worst month in poker, monetary loss-wise. I lost a lot of money this month. Um, and a lot of it was run bad, but a lot of it was also play bad. I was getting a little bit too out of line. I was punting, I was bluffing too much. I was trying to do fancy play syndrome and it definitely cost me some money. But today I actually felt like I played really good at the Bellagio. I tried to hone things in. I tried to play good poker and I felt good today. I felt like I played good ranges. I didn't pay anybody off. I didn't do any stupid massive bluffs and I won like 2K at the Bellagio. So that helps out a little bit. Um, the one good thing about poker is that we've all been in a scenario like I was tonight. You guys, no matter where you're at in the world, if you play poker, all of you guys have gotten your aces cracked. Like, I know all of you guys have gotten your aces cracked. Maybe not at 5, 10, 20 for an 11K pot, but you guys know how it feels to get your aces cracked. So the one good thing about having this vlog is that I can like rant and express my feelings and I know you guys are gonna get it. Like you're sitting on your couch, you're watching, on your phone and all of you guys can think of a story of you getting your aces cracked by a shitty hand and that was me tonight, you know? It happens, what am I gonna do? But I'm ready to get out of Vegas. I've been here 15, 16 days. Um, ready to get back home and see my dog, get back down to Florida, get some humidity in my life. I need a favor from you guys though. I need you guys to like this video, comment and share it if you can to people because the more views I get on this video, the more money I'll make on the video, and maybe I'll get a little bit of a rebate from that 5K loss. Hope you guys enjoyed this Vegas series. Next up, we'll be back in Florida. And that is it for this one. Until next time, I'll see ya.